and I owe an apology. You know, I have to I have to be willing to admit when I am wrong. And in this case, picking the Texans Steelers game this week, Jack and I sat here, and Jack is driving back from Auburn, which he did hit on his bet, almost saw a great upset. But we sat here and we were saying we expect TJ Watt and the Steelers defensive line to get to CJ Stroud, make him make mistakes, and see a Pittsburgh Steelers team who has expectations, even though they're not that good. There are expectations always for the Pittsburgh Steelers. They got absolutely manhandled by the Houston Texans. And you called that, Ziggy. You called, I don't know if you called 30 to 6, but you were on the Texans this week in our game four, in our week four game picks. Just a really impressive performance on both sides of the ball for this Houston team. CJ Stroud looking sharp once again. And I mean, every week he seems to just get better and better. 16 for 30. Not exactly a great completion percentage there, but 306 yards, two touchdowns. They ran all over Pittsburgh, uh, got after Pickett. It was a great performance for the Texans fans who were in the comments saying, just wait and you see. Uh, and, and we did, like our, I did at least. So Ziggy, I'll give you this little victory lap here because you were the lone wolf who picked the Houston Texans. Oh yeah, I mean, you mean to tell me on the day of J.J. Watt's Ring of Honor enshrinement that he the Texans weren't going to come out and win? That like J.J. Watt was just going to sit on the sidelines and let his brother take over the day. No <laughs> chance. But I mean, look, like this is an exciting time to be a Steelers fan. If you were to go back to the beginning of the season, ask Steelers fans like in your wildest wait, dreams. Wait, you mean Texans? Ex- yeah, excuse okay, me. Boy, okay. that, that's I mean, a just... tough one. No, I mean, for Texans fans, this season's going exactly how they wanted it to. Ask the Texans at the beginning of the year, like, what do you want out of the season? Here are some of the things they would have said. You want D'Amico Ryans to come with a great looking game plan every week, show he can handle being a head coach. We want CJ Stroud to do well under pressure. We want Nico Collins to finally live up to his potential. We want the defense, particularly Will Anderson, who we gave a lot of draft capital up for to start looking like a real game wrecker. And every single one of those things is happening in Houston, right? Things are just going well for this team. CJ Stroud, has thrown for the second most yards of any rookie quarterback or any quarterback in his first four games in NFL history. Pine only Cam Newton. Six touchdowns, zero interceptions. He's just playing good football in tough circumstances, right? It's not like he was walking in with a great offensive line. Well, maybe he was, but almost all of them are hurt. It's not like he had an established wide receiver one. It's not like there's a run game. It's not like the defense was great last year. And suddenly they look like a team that can compete. If they win their divisional games, they will go to the playoffs. And I did not expect to say that at the start of the season. Oh, I don't think anyone did. Even Houston fans, you, like you guys can say that you were excited to see what would, was going to happen with D'Amico Ryans and CJ Stroud and Will Anderson. But I don't think even in your wildest dreams that you could have seen a 2-2 two and two start with the way they, they've looked the past two weeks happening, especially against the Steelers, against the Jaguars. After the Ravens game in week one, I was sitting back saying, yeah, you know, like there are some highs. There, but there's a lot more lows to this game, but uh, the Texans have a long way to go. I think that's what we said. They have a long way to go. D'Amico Ryans has a team that he's going to need to coach up really well to be competitive at all this year. But I mean, even beyond that. And now we're sitting here week four, go, going into week five next. And I'm looking at their offense saying, wow, Nico Collins, seven receptions for 168 yards and two touchdowns this week. It was just a week ago that we were talking the same way about, about Tank Dell. And still, Robert Woods is in the mix. We're waiting to see John Mechie. Will he ever get back to form? Like, there there are a number of different pieces who are starting to step up for the offense in C.J. Stroud. And if Damian Pierce can get going, this was finally the day that we saw that Texans running game take a step forward. They were kind of shut down the first three weeks. But he had 24 carries for 81 yards. He was, much, he was a much larger part of the game than that, though, against Pittsburgh, even getting involved in the passing game uh, for a 27-yard catch earlier on. I, yeah, I'm watching right now C.J. Stroud, and we talk about Ryan Day in Ohio State when he was there, and he kind of had the had the uh, I would say the handcuffs on a bit. It wasn't until that Ohio that Georgia game at the end of the year where we finally saw Ryan Day say, "You know what? Go out and make plays. Like go out there, use your legs, scramble around a little bit." And that's the C.J. Stroud we're seeing now, the playmaker, not someone who's just going to sit in the pocket and kind of pick apart weak college football defenses. It's we're seeing an impressive C.J. Stroud. And as you look up and down this schedule for the Texans, I know that we, we always say don't put too much into schedule because you don't know what's going to happen. It's there, man. Falcons, Saints, Panthers, Bucks, Bengals who are struggling, Cardinals, Jaguars, Broncos, Jets, Titans, Browns, Titans, Colts. I mean, 
that is very winnable. Most of those games are very winnable for the way Houston's playing at the moment. You got to be excited. Absolutely. And I think the biggest thing, right, whenever rookie quarterbacks come in, people immediately start making excuses whenever things don't go well. And sometimes you hear this from the players, too. Like, I'm not trying to poop all over Justin Fields, but he come in and he says, oh, the coaching's not good. The receivers, they got me. We're struggling. The offense just isn't built to my strengths. CJ Stroud, he's on the third string left tackle week three. And it's just, all right, guys, I'm going to go out and win us some football games. Right now, they've won two in a row. They're going to try and carry that. uh, I believe they're in London next week playing the Falcons. I believe they are. No, Atlanta's Atlanta's not. No way. Because Atlanta was in London last week or this week. I'm not sure. In any case. Yeah. So set that aside. Look, the, the Texans, they're a good team. They're playing well. There aren't any excuses on either side of the ball. And I mean, if you beat the Jaguars by 20, you beat the Steelers by 24. Like, this is a team that's really starting to take shape with a lot of strengths. I can definitely see good things for them in the future. So you would say, just to wrap up the Texan side of this here, the playoffs are on in Houston? Are the playoffs on? I don't know. Right? But, like, every single team in this division is 2-2. Two and two. It's wide open. Anyone can win. Here, I think, is the important thing, regardless of playoffs. This season is going exactly how you would script it up. script it up if you were a Texans fan hoping for things to be good. Basically, the opposite of the Steelers, actually. The Mm -hmm. Steelers, basically anything that could go wrong for them has gone wrong at this point in the season. So it is exciting to just have a functional team with a good, promising quarterback and good coaching. We haven't been able to say that about the Texans for a few years now. 